Hey friends, and welcome back to another episode of Global Slow Fashion Awareness. It has been way too long since I have filmed one of these videos, and for that I am truly sorry. My aim is to put out about one GSA video per month to spread awareness about fast fashion and the conditions that garment workers face in their everyday lives. If you're looking to learn more about the origins of this series and what the heck it has to do with your sewing practice, you can check out this video. In today's episode, we're going to look at fair trade. This is a topic that spans all industries and affects billions of people on our planet. I'm going to briefly touch on what is fair trade and the fair trade mark. What does it mean to be fair trade? How to learn more about fair trade? Why we should shop fair trade? And how to shop fair trade? I will be sure to leave any relevant links down in the description box below. Let's start with what is fair trade and the fair trade mark. Fair trade in and of itself refers to goods and services being traded, so bought and sold, at fair market value. It means producers and laborers receive a living wage for their work. It means no slave labor. It means no child labor. It means healthy working conditions, living wages, quality. There is an organization called Fair Trade and there's also a fair trade certification. The fair trade certification is totally separate from the fair trade mark, but I think quite similar in ethos. So for the simplicity of this video, we're kind of gonna focus on fair trade mark. So here's a blurb pulled from the fair trade website. Fair trade is about better prices, decent working conditions, and fair terms of trade for farmers and workers. It's about supporting the development of thriving farmers and worker communities that have more control over their futures and protecting the environment in which they live and work. And it's your opportunity to connect with the people who grow the produce and make the products that we all depend on. The Fair Trade Organization supports over 1.5 million farmers and laborers worldwide, 23% of which are women. The focus is primarily in what is referred to as the Global South. And fair trade makes sure that these producers are earning a fair price for their crops and goods, with a significant emphasis on environmental sustainability as well. Producers also receive what's called a fair trade premium that they can choose how to spend. This can be for things like wells, for clean drinking water or agricultural uses, or for farmer training. This organization is 50% owned by producers of the fair trade goods, meaning they get an equal vote in what happens in the industry they call home. It means when you see their fair trade mark on a good, you know that the product you're looking at comes from a place where the workers have been treated properly. But what if something doesn't have that mark or the certification? Here in Saskatchewan, there's exactly one shop that carries fair trade wine. That's it, in our entire province, according to the fair trade website. Does that mean every other item we see in our stores is created by workers who are earning pennies for their hard day's work? Not exactly. The fair trademark focuses on things that are commonly exploited, things like coffee, tea, spices, gold, sugar, wine, as well as things like flowers, chocolate or cocoa, and fruits and veggies, just to name a few. They also have a section dedicated to cotton. Fair Trade is doing amazing work with farmers and workers all over the world. In fact, they have used their high standards to mark over 30,000 products with their stamp, available in over 125 countries. But I have a hard time believing they've covered it all. I feel there are many other items in our everyday life that don't have the Fair Trade mark, but could be considered ethical. Check out farmers markets, buy your meat right from producers, Shop small and shop local. Support your home economy and raise awareness about the importance of it. Driving to the big city for groceries isn't benefiting your small town. In our society, this is becoming a bigger topic and something that is more widely talked about and discussed, but it wasn't always. In fact, it's not something I really heard or cared about until I was into my 20s. Growing up, we just went to the store and bought what we needed. There was no forethought to where it came from or who made it. Child labor and global working conditions weren't topics we covered in our conventional schools. So how do we change that? How do we create a revolution? We ask questions. We vote with our dollar. And what does that mean for us as sewists? We need to ask suppliers where the fabric is being made. Find shops you trust, build relationships. Do some research. Trace it back as far as you can if you're buying new materials. 
buy dead stock or thrifted pieces. Use your influence and online presence to raise awareness. Talk about it with your friends. Instill it in your children. Be the change. Think about it. The internet is a powerful place. We can purchase nearly anything with the click of a mouse or the tap of your finger. But it also holds the power of information. Explore, invest, take the time to find the perfect fit for your beliefs and don't settle for anything less. Are the prices higher? Yeah, of course they are. Because we're paying for equality. Let's evaluate our priorities. It's our home at stake after all. I stumbled on a great resource for finding ethical fabric shops. I'll be sure to leave them in the description box with the other amazing resources I've found. I'd love for you to check them out as well as the rest of my global slow fashion awareness playlist. Thank you so much for watching, liking this video and subscribing to my channel. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.